Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is show you how we go about solving a cubic equation that factorizes. Sometimes cubic equations don't factorize, and what you need to do is, say, use a graphical method or an iterative method. And these are methods I discuss in later videos. So for now then, we've got a cubic equation which factorizes. So the method of solving is to make sure that it equals zero, and it's a good idea to make sure that the first term is positive and you write it in descending powers of x. So if I subtract 23x from both sides, rearrange it, and I get this equation here. Now the next stage is to use the factor theorem, and it's convenient to let the left-hand side here be equal to f of x. So if we let f of x then be identical to the expression on the left-hand side of our equation here, this helps then with the factor theorem. Now I'm assuming that you're familiar with the factor theorem, and that is that if f of x is a polynomial and f of p equals 0, then x minus p is a factor of f of x. So if you'd like further examples on this, do check out the tutorials on my website. Now, we've got to then find a value of x that makes this come to 0. And as I mentioned earlier in this tutorial, always check out factors of your constant on the end here. In this case, 10. So start with, say, x equals 1. And if you do f of 1, let's see if we get 0. Well, this is 2 minus 5 minus 23 minus 10. That comes to minus 36. So that would mean that x minus 1 would not be a factor. Try minus 1 if it doesn't work. OK, so let's put minus 1 through. If you put minus 1 through here, you'll find you get 6, not 0. Now try another factor of 10. Let's say 2. If you do f of 2, substitute that in, you end up with minus 60. So it doesn't seem as if we're having much luck. Try minus 2, though, and you'll find that it does equal 0. So just to check that out, f of minus 2, then, would equal 2 times minus 2 cubed. That comes out at minus 16. Minus 2 squared is 4 times minus 5 is going to be minus 20. Minus 23 times minus 2, well, that's plus 46. And then you've got the minus 10 on the end. And you can see that that comes to 0. So by the factor theorem, p here would be minus 2. So it would mean that x minus minus 2, x plus 2 in other words, is a factor of f of x. So if I just recap that point in here, I can say that therefore x plus 2 is a factor of f of x. Now, if f of minus 2 hadn't have worked, then I'd have gone on to try, say, 5 as being a factor of 10, or minus 5, then 10, or minus 10. OK? Anyway, we've now found a factor, x plus 2, so that means that our equation here can be reduced down to x plus 2 times a quadratic factor will equal 0. So, therefore, what we've got is x plus 2 times a quadratic factor, and I'm going to call that quadratic factor then ax squared plus bx plus c, OK? And that's going to then equal 0. Now, there's two ways that generally we use to get the quadratic factor. One is by inspection, and the other is by algebraic long division. I'll show you both methods in this video. But firstly, I'm going to turn to the inspection method. I feel that this is a lot quicker, and it's easier with 
practice, okay? So we've already got our linear factor, x plus 2. So I'll just put this down here. We've got x plus 2, and then this is going to be multiplied by the quadratic factor. Let's put then it equals 0. Now, we've got to get an x cubed term. It's going to be 2x cubed. And so we multiply x with the ax squared, and that's the only term that's going to be an x cubed term. So a clearly has to be 2, okay? So we've got 2x squared there, so that when we do x times the 2x squared, it gives us the 2x cubed. The other term that's easy to work out is the constant on the end, minus 10. Because the only time you get the constant is when you multiply the 2 with the constant c here. It's 2 times c, 2c, which has to equal the minus 10. So clearly, c has to be minus 5. OK, so I'll put that in there. What we need to get, though, is the b in the x term. And this is easy to do because I'll just put down here for b. If we, say, compare x squared terms that we get when we expand the bracket, we're going to have x times the bx. That will give us an x squared term. We'll end up with bx squared. We'll also get an x squared term when we multiply the 2 with ax squared. 2 with the 2x squared. In other words, 4x squared. And what we need is minus 5x squared. So this has got to be identical to minus 5x squared. And clearly, when you compare this, b has to be minus 9. Minus 9x squared plus 4x squared will give us minus 5x squared. So it follows from here that b must be equal to minus 9. And so I'll put that in there, that we've got minus bx minus 9x in there. OK, well, that's one way that we can work out the linear factor. The other way I mentioned was by doing algebraic long division, something like this, where we divide x plus 2 into f of x. That's the expression that we had for f of x. And I'm assuming that you are familiar with this. Again, if not, do check out the videos I've got on algebraic long division. So doing algebraic long division gives us our quadratic factor on the top, 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. OK, so that would take us into this step here. So now that we have our quadratic factor here, we would want to take this further and see if it factorises further. So I'll just divide this off here. And so therefore, we have x plus 2 and our quadratic factor factorises further. It factorises to a couple of brackets here. We'd have a 2x and an x to give us the 2x squared. And for the minus 5, that will be plus 1 in here and minus 5 there. Check that out. That expansion gives you the 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. So that means that each of those factors, I'll write them in, could equal 0. So x plus 2 could equal 0, or 2x plus 1 equals 0, or x minus 5 would equal 0. And therefore, that would lead to x equaling minus 2, or x equaling minus 1 half, or x equaling 5. And that is how you go about solving a cubic equation that factorises. Okay?